on guys, it's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So today is Sunday, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great weekend so far. It's actually a beautiful day in New York for winter. It's like over 60 degrees, so we will take it. Bitcoin is, actually let's give this a quick refresh live. Yeah, it's basically up 0.77%. We're still kind of bouncing around in the same area that we've been for the past two days. Now, you will notice we did have an attempted breakout right here. We got up to about $8,290. We could not get above $8,300. We are still going up slightly. We do have an uptrend, but we are going to get stomped out again by some very serious resistance, and I want to talk about whether or not we could break through that. If not, what we could be looking for short term, and of course, we do have the halving coming up in basically exactly four months from today. I want to analyze what we've done the past two times. Will it happen again? Most likely not, but there are some clues. So let's have a look. Let's dive in. I also want to talk about why the Bitcoin price will most likely not touch the 200 weekly moving average. Now, this was the absolute low that I was speaking about, which is currently sitting around $5,100. We're going to get into all that today. If that sounds good to you, you know what to do. And of course, if you're not subscribed, well, what are you waiting for? We do this every day. And also we do have the Ledger Nano S giveaway every Monday. All you got to do is drop a comment on literally any video and you are eligible. Now let's dive in. Let's have a look. Let's give it a refresh live. Let's see what's happening right here. So kind of still do have some of the altcoins outperforming Bitcoin today. You do notice, for example, Ethereum up 1%, you know, Bitcoin up 0.93%. Not too much of a difference, but altcoins generally outpacing Bitcoin today. We do have some big gainers, made safe coin uh, up 13%, Bitcoin, Bitem, 0x, IOST, Ontology, Zcoin, BitTorrent, iExec, and our good old buddy Neo. Having a look right here, you will notice some of these, you know, have been sort of outflows from Bitcoin into the altcoins. Still not too much new money coming into the space, right? Having a look right here, volume has dropped off significantly. It's almost half of what it was about two days ago. This is to be expected for the weekend. And of course, fear and greed index pulling back a little bit back into fear territory. Now, having a look off this bounce that we had off the CME futures gap right here, you will see we did have a nice spring back. CME's closed at 8000 $1,125, which means that we will be looking for, you know, some type of a little mini gap to potentially close, but I don't want to talk about any more gaps. Okay, guys, but you do notice we are putting in this nice uptrend now right here. You can see we are coming to the top of this channel. Now, it's very possible that we sort of, you know, maybe ride along the top of it right here, you know, just kind of keep hitting the resistance. But if we don't break above it, we do risk the chance of potentially falling lower. You can see even back here, you know, we had this fake out when we went up to about 8,468, which is, in my opinion, the short term level to beat. If we do break out of this resistance, now if we do fall lower, we may actually sort of retest around that $7,860 level, or we could just keep bouncing our way right here. I mean, I can kind of just show you guys real quick if you want. I'll just kind of draw. So if we don't get a breakout, you know, we might get rejected, maybe bounce around this level a little bit, you know, try again. But essentially what I'm looking for is some consolidation potentially to the end of this month, beginning of February. Okay. Now, having a look right here, the reason I'm saying this is because we are in this massive descending wedge, which we cannot lie, has unfortunately been the trend for over the past six months, going on seven months now. So this is going to be a very difficult trend to break. However, if we can get above the sort of $9,400 level, get back up here, then I do think that that would be good for Bitcoin. And I do still think we could see a $9,800 Bitcoin this month. It's possible but keep in mind, we do have to break the trend, which is quite strong right now. Of course, having a look at this, I do anticipate bouncing around sideways until the halving, unless we have some kind of crazy black swan event. But that being said, it is a good opportunity to accumulate Bitcoin because I want to get into the halving super quick. Now, you can see right here, this is actually from Nunya Business. Okay, on the left, we have basically the halving from 2012. And then right here, we have from 2016. Now, keep in mind the first halving, and we are looking at about 120 days before because that's kind kind of where we are right now today. So basically we're right here at this green line, you know, but in today's date. And you could see back on the first halving, there wasn't really much anticipation. Bitcoin didn't do much. In fact, it just went sideways. Obviously this was the first time it ever happened. Lots of people really didn't know what to expect. Well, after that, you could see we had a massive pump, 2,100% and no sell off afterwards. Now looking at the chart right here, hopefully I'm not in the way. But you can see that we actually had sort of a front run up to the halving the second time. Now, I think this was because the market was anticipating it this time. They saw what had happened the first time. So the second time, they were basically trying to pile on in. Well, 
that kind of caught everyone off guard because look what happened after that. Bitcoin actually took a 30% fall leading into the halving. Now, I I do want to also be transparent about this. This wasn't 100% just price. We also did have Bitfinex that got hacked back in the day. This was back in 2016. I don't know how many people were around then. So I do think that that had something to do with the sell-off, but do notice the key is the front running up to it, but it still had a 140% pump, right? So the question is, what are we looking to basically anticipate this time? Well, it does look like it's going to be different because obviously these scenarios have already played out and smart money isn't going to want to do exactly what we did the last two times, right? So I do anticipate that the overall having will be different this time around. We may not even see any major movements, uh, you know, up to a couple months after the having. It might just go sideways for a long time before finally, inevitably having the run up, which I do believe it will have the run up because we obviously still have, you know, supply and you know, demand. Let me know what you guys think, but that's just what I'm looking at. Now, this right here, this yellow line represents the 200 weekly moving average. And I have basically said that this is my absolute bottom for Bitcoin. I do not think Bitcoin is going to go any lower than this. Reason being, it not only provided support down here during the 2015 bottom, but it also provided support during the absolute bottom that we had literally right here in December. So, I mean, that's a pretty uh, pretty significant trend line, right? But the interesting thing is we've actually seen this from Murad Mahmoudov, who's also responsible for the Lindy effect, which we're going to go into a little bit later in this video. You're going to want to stick around for that. But he says, look at the three-day chart. Look at the four-day chart. Look at the five-day chart. All of these moving averages, these 200 moving averages, are holding us very, very well. And he says in his view, he doesn't think we're going to the weekly 200 MA because as crazy as it sounds, the 53% drop that we had from around 13,000 to around 6,400 wasn't a full-out Bitcoin bear market, but rather, unironically, just a mid-bull cycle correction. And you can see right here, having a look at all of these cycles, they do tend to get long longer over time as the market matures, but ultimately these cycles still do continue to play out. So maybe it's not a four-year cycle. Maybe we're going to start moving into like a five-year cycle or a six-year cycle as the markets mature, kind of similar to what you see in traditional stocks where, you know, it took gold over a decade to basically have a recovery, right? So that could be the situation moving forward. And another thing I want to point out too is if we just kind of zoom out here and put on the overall trend. Now, keep in mind, these lines are simply just drawn to show us what we've already done. I'm not trying to predict the future, but you could see that Bitcoin actually, let me, uh, let me even take the moving average out of here just to make it even clearer for you. Um, you know, Bitcoin has essentially respected this sort of, you know, curve, this sort of trend that it's been in. And you can see every time we sort of come down to the bottom, we ride along it for a little bit and then we have a blast off. I mean, look, we, we basically touched this bottom on uh, August 17th of 2015 and we didn't really have a major bounce off that until March 27th of 2017. So currently the fact that we've actually touched the bottom again, you can see right here, I wouldn't be surprised if we just sort of went along this sort of just slowly, you know, into the having, and maybe even towards the third quarter or even fourth quarter of this year, you really start to see that massive run up that we had last time. So that's what I'm thinking. And I think that it may not be as exciting as everybody is anticipating that it's going to be. And you know, that's just how it is though, guys, but you got to have faith. You got to hold some Bitcoin. And uh, yeah, that being said, we are still consolidating sideways. So like I said, if we don't break out of this area, uh, yeah, we, we could potentially come down and retest some of these previous supports. But I do have to talk about the running Bitcoin tweet. Now, I know I'm a little bit late on this. I did retweet it, um, but I didn't speak about it on the channel. So obviously, Hal Finney had put this out January 10th, of tw uh, 2009. And lo and behold, guess what happened uh, just a few days later? Well, we had the first Bitcoin transaction. It was 10 Bitcoin sent from Satoshi Nakamoto himself to this guy, Hal Finney, who actually a lot of people think might be Satoshi. So he might've just sent himself a transaction possibly. Um, but we're not going to get into that today, but having a look right here, you can see that, uh, you know, the Genesis block happened on January 9th. And then, like I said, on the 12th, basically we had that transfer. So one, uh, so, you know, essentially this, this is basically the day If you guys are curious what I'm looking at. This is Bitcoin history, timeline, and origins. This is from the street.com. I, I think this is a really amazing article. If you guys are interested in like kind of like the whole history of Bitcoin leading up to where we're at. But in a nutshell, I will drop this below. Having a look right here, though, this is sort of making its round. It's Hal Finney's prediction that he made. It was just for fun. He wasn't saying that Bitcoin would actually become, uh, you know, $10 million per coin. But this is where, uh, you know, $100 trillion 
Plan B got his got his name from, and this is assuming that Bitcoin essentially consumes all of the money in the world, right? Now, keep in mind, it, it could even be higher than this, right? Some people are saying this is too high of a speculation. Well, I mean, with all the derivatives and everything else, it's possible. You can see Adam uh, back down here. He says it's closer than it sounds, as along the path of hyper Bitcoinization, the USD inflation rises, uh, you know, aided by modern monetary theory rationale for high inflation. So one dollar becomes worth, say, ten C over a decade, or two of monetary craziness, then 10 million Bitcoin is 1 million Bitcoin in today's money. Do you understand what I'm saying? So due to the fact that we do have inflation, the dollar is going to lose two to 3% annually anyway, right? So by today's standard, you know, getting a, you know, $1 million Bitcoin could actually equate to a $10 million Bitcoin in the future due to the fact that we just have this terrible inflation. You know what I'm trying to say? It's kind of like, your grandfather going to the store and buying something, you know, you can't buy what you used to buy with that same amount of paper money, right? Um, he also says 100K Bitcoin doesn't seem so far given we've already crossed 10K and a lot of people thought we'd never even hit 10,000 and in fact, we've clearly bounced around 10K for quite a long time. But also guys, the most important thing is to remember the Lindy effect. You need time. Time is the most important thing. You know, you're not gonna create life-changing technology and the next day have the whole world using it, right? And you can see this is actually a little bit, maybe potentially outdated by Murad Mahmoudov. He says we're basically down here, okay? So next we'd have to have a greater perceived safety, greater education, right? Still a lot of people don't understand how Bitcoin works, greater decentralization, liquidity, then it becomes a reliable store of value. And yeah, I mean, we work our way up to better price stability, widespread medium of exchange, uh, even greater price stability, convenient unit of account, and then finally, full global money. But you guys can see we have a very, very, very long way to go. However, on the bright side, the Lindy effect does say that the longer something has been around, the more chance that it's gonna be around again. Essentially, in a nutshell, if something has existed for 10 years, there's a good chance it'll be here for another 10 years. Pretty simple, but that's essentially what the Lindy effect is all about. Also, just speaking on Bitcoin, let's not deny that Bitcoin was the best performing asset of 2019. You could see it outperformed gold, the S&P, which only did 29% and 52% respectively. Bitcoin closed out around 93%. And also outperformed many, many altcoins. Not all the altcoins. There were some smaller cap coins that, that well outperformed Bitcoin. But for the most part, Bitcoin was the place to be in 2019, especially if you're taking a set it and forget it approach, right? Now, this is kind of just a side note, but I did see this from my buddy, the Crypto Wolf. Now, he did point out this interesting correlation. He says the investment of the decade will be Ethereum. He says this chart must not be ignored. Now, I'm not going to go into this, but look at that. That's a pretty crazy fractal, right? So if uh, you know Ethereum sort of is following the footsteps of what Bitcoin did, then we would essentially be right around where Bitcoin was, um, you know, in sort of April of 2012. So, well, that, imagine buying Bitcoin in April of 2012, right? So just keep that chart in mind. Not saying that Ethereum is going to do what Bitcoin did, but it is interesting to see this plotted out. Now, I do want to end on this one sort of topic, which is, you know, talking about the whole, you know, Iran conflict. Do Iranians really believe in the power of Bitcoin, right? Is it really a safe haven asset? Did we see them scrambling and buying up all the Bitcoin? Well, we did know that that price was a little bit misconstrued. It was a little bit, um, the information was uh, not exactly accurate, but they did, according to Cointelegraph, get involved with Hadi Namadi, which is an Iranian digital currency specialist and chief operating officer of Bitfolio Capital. And he said, after the summer of 2019, many Iranians came to know about Bitcoin because of all the mining news and the use of electricity associated with the same, which was vastly covered by various state media outlets and newspapers, Bitcoin on a mass scale is being seen as a speculative alternative asset and digital money. Now, here's the craziest part, though. When asked about which section of people among the local masses are actively making use of Bitcoin, he said the majority is actually miners. So apparently you're finding more miners in Iran than, you know, investors or active traders. They actually come second. Very, very interesting. That's, that's, that's not what you would think. But if you actually go over here and have a look at, um, for example, local Bitcoins, now I do have Iran pulled up, you could see 
this isn't in that high of demand. And I don't, you know, I'm not trying to be the bearer of bad news here, but, you know, according to this, now this is just one piece of data. Okay. I haven't analyzed all transactions happening in, with Bitcoin, but it does look like it has fallen off recently. Now, I don't know if this is because they've made it more difficult with KYC. I haven't really done my research into that, but based on this, you will notice that it's not like demand is skyrocketing through the roof. So I just wanted to kind of make things a little more uh, transparent, you know, kind of like get away from that hype, you know, where just like, oh, that's it. We're, you know, we need this. You know, everybody tries to just like overhype it. So I just wanted to sort of bring that up moving forward. But that being said, you did have FTX hours into their announcement of launching Bitcoin options. They actually did over 1 million in trading volume. So options are a little bit more complicated for the average person. But essentially, I guess this is just showing more demand for the space. And honestly, it's not Satoshi's vision, but like I said in my video yesterday, the more opportunities that people have to expose themselves to Bitcoin, even if it's not necessarily holding the underlying asset, it still creates that sort of presence to be in the media, to be out in the open, right? Out of sight, out of mind. The last thing you want is people not talking about Bitcoin. And even if it's not people saying you should hold it and they're just speculating on it, I still think that it's good to get it out to the masses because let's be honest, people had a really bad taste left in their mouth after that 20K pullback. But that being said, is Bitcoin a safe you know, safe haven asset. Let me know what you guys think. But that's basically where I'm going to end today's video. I don't want to go on too long. It is Sunday. You guys do need to go out and enjoy your day. We are still consolidating sideways. So, you know, guys, like I said, yeah, I mean, we're going to hit some kind of resistance here. We're either going to break out and we're going to get above the $8,400 level or we're going to get rejected and retest some of these lower levels down here. Once again, though, keep in mind that the CME, uh, you know, did close at 8,125. So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. If you're not subscribed, definitely click that subscri uh, subscribe button. Make sure that you turn on the bell notification. YouTube can be pretty tricky turning that off. If you want to win a ledger, you know what to do. Any comment makes you eligible. But most importantly, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. You guys rock. You're the reason that I do this every single day. My name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto and peace out.